Welcome back to Popes and Pylons. Let's play some more European Dallas 4. We're playing as Genoa. We're going for a custom achievement on this competition. We have to, well, eventually grab the Mouse of India achievement, uh, controlling all of the Indian subcontinent. Only, I think, even. But we have a whole bunch of stipulations of how we can go about that. We have to play as Genoa. We have to not deal with any overseas anything. No overseas trade notes, no colonization, no grabbing land that's um, only connected by overseas or by deep water provinces, whatever they're called, high seas. And uh, we have to, all the while, make and keep Genoa the highest value trade node in the world. And it is that in the known world right now. Uh, our direct contestant is the English Channel, which keeps on growing here. I'm feeling that there's starting to be some income from the new world, isn't there? Um, we don't know these trade nodes, so we wouldn't know. But I'm feeling... See that 0.63 incoming? Oh no, it's actually from the White Sea. Oh, <laughs> I don't know this trade node. There's the name. Funny. Uh, can you see that here? Incoming. Chesapeake Bay. There's, it's claiming there's no money coming from there just yet. So it's just local money. But still, that's gonna come. And this is scary. We are, what, five ducats ahead? And um, we have a few things we can do to increase that slightly immediately if we have to. Uh, especially by sending our trade boats somewhere where there's a lot of money, like Ragusa. Yeah, it's probably going to be Ragusa, isn't it? Can't send trade posts to the Champagne note, otherwise we do that. Yeah. If we have to, we're going to put our trade boats into Ragusa to increase the steering. It's going to reduce our income, because we're currently using the boats to collect on all that money in Genoa. But overall, it's going to pay off. Now, I would be quite interested in expanding in the Genoa node for my own personal income, but it will not do anything for our goal, except um, for the fact that we could then build like many factories, increase the actual value in the node, and that would help. But what we really need to do is grab power in the nodes that steer towards Genoa, I think, and then of course try to increase the value there as well. We have some power in Tunis, but not insane amounts. And um, there's also just not a lot of money in Tunis. There's a decent amount of money in Alexandria. And we're steering, well, we and others are steering a bunch of that straight up into our, right? Yeah. It looks like it's steering into Tunis, but no, it's going past it, going straight into Genoa. So this is a point where trade power is good. And look at this, there's 10 ducats still in there, right? Yeah, this is what's left in the node. So there's a lot of money we could drag out of Alexandria. If we could grab these centers of trade up in the Delta, which we do have claims on, I believe we do, that would be huge. Now, the Mamluks are at war with the Ottoman. I don't feel up to the task of fighting the Mamluk right now, but we should definitely check in on that. They're winning that war. They're going to bring in Shamar and Beya, who... Well, Shamar is actually kind of big. I mean, I'm sure that they're not huge, but they actually do exist. Don't know if I've ever seen those guys in any relevance on the map. Wait, that's Mamluks. That's Mamluks. Why does right-clicking Shamar give me the Mamluk diplomacy? Do I not know what a Shamar is? something. I've not discovered Shammai yet, but I have. See their stuff. Hmm. So I guess we don't get to know how powerful they are. I don't think they're super powerful, but uh, the Mamluks are. We're talking 54,000 troops. Yeah, there's no way I can deal with that. Unless I could bring in friends like the French, but that's they consider it a distant war. So yeah, Mamluks not quite an option just yet. Hmm... Which is a shame. What are other places we care about? Ragusa node, obviously. But the Grusa node has a similar issue. We have a bunch of cores around there on our subject. So quick look at when these um, go away. Oh, primary cores. Excellent. They're not going to go away. Um, 
So that's good. But all these cores, except for one, if I remember correctly, yeah, are in Hungarian or Austrian land. And these guys happen to be linked by personal union. So if we fight Hungary, we're fighting Austria. And vice versa, though, obviously, that's the worst direction. I'm not quite into that yet either. Now, we could call in the French if we would do this with all our reconquests here. And I assume, with Hungary being automatically co-belligerent, that we could also take all the cores in Hungary for the reconquest Kalsbeli as well. The English would not join. Trier, Trent and Mulhaus would join, but that doesn't really matter. But obviously we need the Frenchmen. I mean, look at this. 50, 65,000, 67,000 people and 190,000 manpower to our 20 something. If I added the French, it would be fairish, but we'd still be outnumbered. Tiny bit, we have more guns. But that's rough and the Pope would not want to join. No, would Muscovy. We could Muscovy in there as well. That would be a thing, wouldn't it? But distant 198 is a lot. So yeah, that's not going to happen even if they were more interested and had those 10 favors. 10 favors are close. It's good to keep in mind. Right, yeah, I don't think the Austrian and Hungarian, th Hungarian thing is in the cards just yet, unfortunately. What is in the cards is Savoy. I'd like to Milan look at the three leagues, but we could bring in the French, except we couldn't. <laughs> wow. Could bring in the Pope, which helps buffer out, buff out the numbers a lot, but I don't like that the French wouldn't come. And yeah, destabilizing probably means you have a truce or a union or a, a marriage. I don't think a marriage counts here. There's the marriage to Savoy. That's not true, so it must be the marriage. Right? Hmm. Hmm, 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 That's slightly annoying. How old is the French king? 53. And you? Also 53. Now, we don't know which direction the marriage was made, but that might end. I think I'll have to accept the fact that we maybe have to go without the French help and have to rely on Mr. Popeman. Which definitely makes things a lot harder. Then again, we don't have any admin anyway. We can't take any land really because we can't control it. We're not even coring all the land we have right now. So, woof. Let's just spend some time at peace. We do have a bit of a head start still on that trade note thing, so hopefully we can keep going with that for a bit. Um, I'm definitely looking at doing investments in our trade companies. I'm also looking at increasing my center of trade in Pisa. Maybe that's something we should do right now. It's only 200, only 200 ducats. Mm. But it does give us that extra trade power, which would be nice. Now, there's something that reduces the cost of upgrading centers of trade, and I keep forgetting what it is. I keep having it in my campaigns. I keep forgetting what it is. Um, it's not the combination of the trade ideas. So... Yeah, I think we're unlikely to get it soon. Just because it's not here. <laughs> mm. So I'm feeling clicking that button, actually. Get some more money in? Yeah. Spend money to make money and all that. Uh, we get 10% extra local trade power. So that's not a lot. Wait, province modifier. Wait, is this just utterly? Oh no, it's not 10%, it's 10. <laughs> so it almost doubles the value of Pisa. That's much better. It's like 10%, that's nothing. 1.6 trade power, no, this is fine. And the rest probably doesn't matter, but hey. 
get that up there, spend some of our money to make more money in the future. Always a good thing to do. And yes, I'm saying always, and I kind of don't mean it, but hey. Uh, what are we doing to separatist wise? We have Tunisians certainly coming up. We have Aiden in Smyrna. But I have an army close by with a boat. Have boat will travel. Um, but currently suppressing the Constantinopolians, the Byzantine separatists in Constantinople. They are at zero, so we could go elsewhere, but we're not getting you to zero. I could bounce over to Matriga and Kaffa real quick. And that's probably worth it, actually. It doesn't cost me much at all to just do attach boat over there. Now that's gonna mean that the Byzantines are gonna have a chance to rise, but we can reduce the Trebizontines to zero. And if we bounce back and forth, um, we have no unrest in either place, no relevant unrest that is. We have unrest, but we don't have rebels, and that's what counts. All right, we can't core, we did spend the money on that thing. I don't think we have great workshops or temples or marketplaces. Again, Kaffa and Azov are decent marketplaces. It's just that our trade power there that almost doesn't matter. Constantinople is worth more, but still not great because it steers into Ragusa. We only get, well, what's this? Like 40% of what's in Ragusa? Five and um, seven is 12, 13, 13 ducats and we get five of that. So it's like 35 to 40%, I guess. Doing very rough math that we'll get. And there's not actually a ton of money in Constantinople. That's not already flowing out. So, yeah, that marketplace won't do much. Then again, it does something. I do pay a little extra because of... I forgot what my modifiers are. I believe there's a building cost. Obviously, we have building cost modifiers going on because it doesn't cost a flat 100. But I forget what is doing this. Oh yeah, we have plus 10% from being an obsessive perfectionist. But apparently we also have negative modifiers. From... The guilds and the renaissance. When's our re-election? 91. We might even re-elect though. I'm just gonna build that marketplace. Just, just, just get it done now. Uh, in Constantinople. Okay. Trade conflict, Lithuania, yada yada, that's probably just pirates. Lithuanian pirates. In the Black Sea. We lost our claim the Lower Don, that's alright. I'm not really looking into expansion in the Pontic Step right now. I don't think that's where we should be focused. Let's grab this again. We already have the Mamluks in here, okay. I do want to keep the option open of punching those Mamluks, if necessary. Now what about you, Cyprus? You're almost done coring. You have no unrest, but apparently you already beat your rebels. Mm. We can make your trade company, which we probably will around here because we don't care about that or we don't want to have the religious issue. Any reason not to do it right now? I don't think so. Bonus trade power, reduce missionary strength, we're not planning on converting you anytime soon. Naval force limit, slight increase in governing cost. Done. Get trade companying over there. And at least for a while we want to have all our New acquisitions overseas to be trade company. Oh, overseas to be trade companies. If only because we don't have any governing capacity to do anything really useful them, with them. Now, how much admin do I need to core Caravan? Oh, it's just not in range. So we have the admin available. All right. And Ferrara, we just sitting on right now. I do eventually want it cored because we stated it already, so it's kind of a waste not to core it. But it's not a priority at all. At all. 
And then you can't decide whether to pirate me or not. Corruption is growing out of bounds. Not a big fan. Um, wait, where did you just pirate? Moria, Achaia, Cephalonia, and Corinth. Ah, uh, yes, pirating this trade note, the Ragusa note. I feel like protecting the Genoa note is more important. I don't know how many boats I need protecting a note. Let's see, that's your pirates. You have two heavies. I don't quite know how the math works on that one. But I assume that my galleys, these guys here, nine galleys wouldn't have been able to stop them from pirating the node. I don't think it says in this tooltip, does it? No. No. So there are two things that um, hunting pirates does. It stops privateers, or reduces their efficiency, and it stops these Berbers from raiding your coast. But the second one, I don't know how that works math-wise. Over here, I wanted to suppress these rebels really quick, so we don't have to worry. You see the Byzantines are technically rising now, but very low chance, and we can always go back to Constantinople and suppress them again. Seems fine. Trade conflict Lithuania, gone. How did the Moroccan war end? Ooh, Portugal took quite a chunk out of you, didn't they? Cipro and Roddy. Yeah, they keep raiding me. Now, what exactly does raiding do? I think we get like a rated coast modifier. But that just means that I suffered looting as a consequence. I believe it does this, right? Yeah, and it generates devastation. I guess we're gonna pay for this fort for a bit. So we can get rid of the devastation. But it also generates devastation here, even though we have a fort. Interesting. Interesting. Certainly do want to stop these guys from doing that, but I don't know how just now. Could get a bunch of money for 0.5 corruption. Now, I don't know if that's a good rate. If I were to debase, which I'm not going to, just um, for a comparison. If I were to debase, I would get 154 ducats for 2%. Why this is 151 ducats for half a percent. So this is about four times as good as the basing. Now, how are we doing on rooting out corruption? We're currently reducing 0.11 by paying 0.96 ducats. Can I set this to a flat out 0.1? I cannot. I'd say the math is good enough. 0 0.96 does 0 0.11. Right? So we need about five times. So we only need five ducats? It said yearly. Must be yearly, right? Yeah, okay, we're getting 0.11 yearly because we're spending a ducat monthly. So it's 12, so it's 60 ducats to root out half a corruption. But we're getting 151 ducats. So this is a yes. I'm wondering whether I should spend money to fight that corruption or not. Kind of feeling like I don't want to. <laughs> not in the, in the large numbers. Obviously that means we should be investing our money elsewhere. If we're not investing our money and we're not doing anything else, then what are we doing? Could, for example, pop up this center in Athens. Damn, that devastation in Athens is bad. Development kills devastation quite quickly. Might actually want to consider doing that. Especially once we upgrade the center of trade here to reduce development costs. If we are ever sitting on any monarch points, then doing some development here to reduce the devastation might be very good. I mean, look at that. Goods produced minus 33%. Not that you have great goods or anything, but still. 
Yeah, that raided coast. Do we need some kind of protection against those guys in the Ragusa node? I just don't know how right now. Well, let's upgrade the Scent of Trade. I have the money, it will be good. Let's get it done. And then I'll jump over to Google, which you can't see. We have E4 um, Barbary Pirates, maybe? Naval Warfare, um, is this the right place? Raiding, Coastal Raiding. Blah, 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 blah. Ideas, Pirate Republics, Requirements. Thai province, yada yada. Development lower than or equal to the blockading power of the fleet. So they must be able to blockade it and able to be able to raid it. Province loot blast emptied. 25 relations penalty. Da, da, da. Causes raided, loots provided. Uh, the efficiency of raiding is reduced by fleets on pirate hunting patrol. Thank you, Wiki. Maybe the hunt pirates will have any information. Da -da -da. Trade power pirates reduced. Situation you have to know. It's effective as something other for raiding your coast. Yeah, but how much? Just doesn't say. I believe we now have 10 years. Is it 10 years? Yeah. 10 years of not getting raided here, so we don't need to worry about it right now. I probably forget in 10 years. I try to rem remember and maybe split up my galleys and try to protect both trade nodes. No clue how much I have to put in there. Uh, that call for Ferrara is taunting me. Oh, we need to remember to go in there. Uh... Still have some time. Ah! <laughs> you just said we were done. Ooh, more cardinals. We have a lot of cardinals. I should probably go ahead and once again buy that mercantilism. Yes, I would love stab, but mercantilism is just such a better rate. Bologna joined that Venish Venetian trade league. We don't care. It's in the Venice trade note. Um, we don't mind that at all. I do mind those Tunisian separatists. And they are 12,000, which is kind of a number I don't particularly enjoy. Let's grab like, I don't know, the two calf and two more. Attach them to the boats and get them over to Tunis. That way we should be able to fully flank the enemy. Probably actually gonna be wasting two infantry that are not gonna be flanking because the game is very bad at positioning flanking cavalry. And I don't think that has been fixed. Ooh, gain of stability, yes. Yes, yes, double yes. Just, just yes. On all accounts. Stability is so worthwhile for us because our stability cost is so huge. We really never want to click the increase stability button. We can avoid it at all. All right, only rebels we're looking at are in Smyrna. Well, in Tunis, of course. But Tunis we kind of have on lockdown here. Now, what kind of land are we talking about here? Drylands, drylands, highlands, and drylands. I'm gonna move over to Caravan. I don't know where these rebels are gonna pop, but um, the only place that's gonna be a real problem is gonna be Caravan because Caravan is highlands and the rebels would get a defensive bonus. In any other position, we should be able to just move in and crush them. Technically, there's a river crossing to Berserta, but we have, eh, we might get a minus one there from the crossing. But that's only if they spurn Berserta and if they have a general that has less maneuver, or more maneuver than we do, or it's equal amounts. So I'm feeling kind of kind of good sitting in K1. Uh, Master Recruiter has died, that's all right. No, I'm actually not. Yeah. I'm not going to suppress with the... Um, people down here. I actually want these to rise up so I can kill them to free up those trips for a while. Uh, grab our final idea and even get some thing bulb for it. This light bulb thingy which is called innovativeness. 
Thank you, game. Gives us caravan power. Let's see what that does to our trade value. 31.5 duck. It's actually a lot. Well, this increased a bunch with our tra sense of trade. Did we do anything else? I feel like all we did was build two sense of trade, one of which was in the node itself. Maybe something else changed here. Yeah, who knows? But there's more money. Good. Uh, but what I want to see is what happens when we do this. So we have trade of 14.71. We have 31.5 ducats here. I'm going to grab the caravan power. And that should update next month. 14.71, 31.5. Let's grab a new millet wiser. I do like more of armies. Done. And let's look for that monthly tick. Uh, I'm not going to click this button right now because I want to see the monthly tick. And that's mercantilism, which might change the numbers. Peasants War in Morocco. Now, uh, we went from. Trade didn't change much. It was 14 point something. 0.1 maybe. And this was 31.5. It's not 31.9. That's a very small change. Wow, is that small? I would have assumed that. Wait. Oh, wrong trade mode. I would have assumed we would have been able to steer a lot more from Champagne. Because of that exit caravan power. Current trade power, merchant presence, caravan power, 62.5. So we got that 25%, so 12.5 extra, uh, extra trade power here before multipliers. It's not huge, it's like a 10% gain. Is that the only place we're doing caravan pushing right now? I believe it is. Yeah. Okay, fine. So not a big change. And let's grab that extra mercantilism for sure. Mm, consider coring Ferrara. Mm. <laughs> what does it do for me? We get a bunch more tax and production. We get manpower and naval force limit. That has to be good. But we're super behind on admin tech, I believe. Well, not super behind, but we are definitely behind. And we do want that renaissance start so we can pick up a military idea group, which is going to be plutocracy. So, yeah, I think I'm going to not call Ferrara just yet. Corruption still rising. All right. Oh, free merchant. Right, we got that extra merchant from finishing our idea group. Now, where is a merchant useful? We're not in a position where merchants are utterly useful. Because we have discussed this before, a merchant in Valencia doesn't do much. A, we already have a merchant here. We could put a merchant into Rhineland just to get more money into Champagne, but that would also get more money into the English Channel, so it would only get, help us a little bit. And that doesn't seem great. We are steering from Ragusa. We are pushing into Ragusa. Again, Constantinople doesn't need a merchant because there's only one out. Um, there's tiny bits of bonuses for having a merchant, right? Um, there's, I think, a two trade power bonus. Let's check here. Uh, I think there's two trade power for having a merchant present. I forget for what this counts for. Maybe I'm wrong. Oh, well, that's Mamlux anyway. Um, there, yeah, merchant presence, two trade power. <laughs> That's very little. But I believe we also get this, right? You only get a trading prof uh, policy if you have a merchant. So you get 5% extra trade node power. But this is not 5%, just points. It's um, a 5% bonus here, right? Yeah, there it is. Maximum trading prophecy, 5%. So it's a 1.05 multiplier on your base trade power. So it's not nothing. But it's also really not a lot. <laughs> um, so if we look at a place like Constantinople, where we have 68 trade power, that would go up to 70 from a merchant, and then we'd get that 5%. I assume that's the order it works in, not that it matters much. So we'd get 5%, so that's another three and a half. So we'd get five and a half points of trade power here. So not even. Not even 10% gain. 
but again it's not nothing so there's certainly the idea to do it mm, where else could we steer oh, there's not really a point in steering in civi oh i think we're not i have to check the rules we're not really allowed to engage in the Sevilla node. Let's really quickly check our first video, or one of our videos, because all of them have the rules on them. No colonial game, no province, going no, blah, 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 blah. What were the trade nodes? Do not use your trade boats in open sea trade nodes. And do not expand into Sevilla, but you shall not three trade nodes. So technically, and that's only technically, I don't think I'm going to do it. But I don't, technically, by the rules, I would probably be allowed to put a merchant into Sevilla. But Sevilla is a sea trade node, therefore we don't get caravan power, therefore we get essentially nothing out of steering there. So, let's not do that, shall we? Also, Sevilla only has one exit, yeah, no point. Alright, so Constantinople, because we have the most trade power there, so we get the most of that uh, trading policy multiplier is an option or Aleppo but essentially all of the money from Aleppo is already going into Alexandria and the tiny bit that's left is going mostly into Constantinople which is worse for us but still okay yeah it has to be Constantinople I think there's no other thing that's any use. We could try something weird like steering away from the English Channel in some way, shape, or form. But I don't even see how that would work. Nah. I'm not seeing it. No. Let's go Constantinople. It's not going to do much, but it's going to do a tiny bit. Check our trade. Uh, but we also got that mercantilism, so there's going to be a bit more of a modifier, but let's see. Right now we're steering... Um, well, right now 6.26 ducats are going this way. I'm going to say transfer trade power with a guy that doesn't have a job. And then we're going to check next month. 6.26 should go up by a tiny bit if nothing else changed. Yeah. 0.18 ducats extra going to Ragusa, out of which we steer like 40% into our... It's not a lot. <laughs> Let's just put it that way, it's not a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, still waiting for those cores, still waiting for those rebels. And uh, I guess we're hitting the end of the episode. I know there's not been a war, but uh, you knew that would be coming, right? We have a lot of um, catch-up to do, consolidating our land. So I think not having a war here is just fine. Speaking of war, the Ottomans are actually catching back up and that's something to keep an eye on. Right, the reason the Mamluks were able to do this well in the war against the Ottomans was because the Ottomans were also attacked from the other side by Poland, I believe? Uh, which they white pieced out. And now the Ottomans are taking their land back. Which might mean beating up the Mamluks a whole bunch. Still a bunch of Mamluk kings around, but less than they used to be. And if this goes the other way, if the Ottomans turn this around, then we might want to jump on grabbing uh, the Nile Delta over there. We'll see. The Ottomans are out of manpower and of people. So, take that for what you will. I wonder if I should send you guys over to... I think I will send you over to Smyrna. We've reduced all the other rebels to zero, for now, so might as well re uh, suppress there. But most importantly, let's put a cut in here. Thank you for watching. If like, you like what you're seeing, then please do hit that like button, subscribe if you're not subscribed yet. If you have anything at all to say to me, then the comment section would not be the worst place to do it. Thank you for watching, and see you folks next time.